Now, the African Development Bank and the government of Kenya have signed a multi-million dollar loan agreement to go towards the construction of the Kenya-Ethiopia hydroelectric power project. Joining us now for a discussion on that going, going, uh, ongoing trade relations between Kenya and Ethiopia is uh, Gabriel Negatu, East Africa Regional Director at the AFDB. Gabriel, thanks for your time. Uh, when I saw this story, I asked the question, I mean, what took you so long? This should have been a no-brainer right from the beginning. Kenya, East Africa's biggest economy, suffering power shortages. Is on the top of it, Ethiopia, loads of hydropower not being used. Thanks, thank Godfrey. Uh, good to be uh, to be talking to you. Uh, true, it's a no-brainer, but uh, it has taken us a few years to get the two countries together and to work out the uh, trade, uh, the energy uh, market uh, rules, regulations, and trade agreements. Now that we have an uptake uh, agreement between the two of them, we are now moving very quickly to build the uh, necessary infrastructure to uh, facilitate the, uh, the trade in energy uh, in, in the region. But this is not only between Ethiopia and Kenya. The idea is within the framework of the East Africa Power Pool, we want to be able to promote energy trade within the sub-region, mm. uh, covering Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, Burundi, and, and beyond. Mm. So give us context here, Gabriel. So 115 million US dollars spent on this one so far. I mean, will this sort out Kenya's uh, energy problems or is this perhaps adding to trying to improve the situation? Yeah, the idea here is not to make this a silver bullet that's going to solve all of Kenya's energy demands. Mm. Uh, the, the, the whole idea is that Kenya is moving towards a diversified energy base, energy source. So you've got this imported energy from Ethiopia. Kenya is also developing its own geothermal uh, energy source. Kenya is also uh, developing the uh, wind energy source. And the African Development Bank, I'm happy to say, is financing all of these uh, activities. He's the main financier in all of these areas. Mm. So the idea is let's diversify the energy source using what's available in the country, geo, hydro, wind, uh, and then import some. So the combination of all this will help address Kenya's energy appetite as, as the largest economy in the region. Mm -hmm. There's a growing appetite for energy and uh, we are helping to address that, that, uh, that appetite. Yeah, how difficult was it to bring the two governments together? How long did it take you to wrap this up? The, uh, the political will, the political will, has always been there, but there were the technical issues that needed to be worked out. You know, the tariff agreements, the uh, uptake agreements between the utility companies. We had to look at the viability of each of the utility companies and so on. So the, the technical work took quite some time. But now, as I said, we have the East Africa Power Pool, which is actively working mm. to set in place the standard norms and the uh, required uh, regulations to allow uh, energy exchange and energy market between the region. Hopefully we are also going to connect the East Africa Power Pool yeah. to the Southern Africa Power Pool, which will allow us now to have energy from the East being sold all the way <coughs> to the Sade countries, as well as North as far as Egypt. So this is part of a larger energy superhighway that we're trying to build uh, in the region. Yeah, you actually have a platform to talk about just what more needs to be done on that front. Which give us time frames. When are we likely to see uh, the fruition of this? This will, uh, you will begin to see energy flowing in the next two to three years, uh, optimistically. <laughs> I like your, your, your caution there, optimistically, within the next two to three years. Now, you have also signed an agreement to try and improve Kenya's education system. Now, this is, of course, is a smaller amount that you're talking about here. But what's the intention? What's the bank trying to do? Well, Godfrey, I, I, I think, as you know, uh, Kenya, being the largest economy, is also the provider of a lot of the technical skills required in this region. If you go to many other countries, you'll find Kenyans running institutions, working in government and private sector. However, there is still a big deficit, uh, technical knowledge. Uh, I think there's a deficit of about 400, 500 engineers every year mm. and many other technical fields. So what this project will do is address the technical skill deficit in Kenya by supporting institutions of higher learning. We are supposed, 
We are supporting eight to nine universities and polytechnics mm. to produce the kind of scientists and engineers that Kenya needs. For example, as Kenya comes into more natural resources, there is a need for more mining engineers, metallurgical engineers, uh, and uh, other uh, natural resource management expertise. So what this program will do is support the institutions of higher learning to provide master's level and PhD level training to Kenyans uh, in various fields of science, innovation, and technology. Okay, so in terms of the expertise that you're expecting here, I'm just looking at some numbers here. I think this is supposed to be 30,000 maybe engineers, 90,000 electricians, 400,000 uh, 400, artisans. Now, just what difference do you think this will make in terms of trying to uh, build the education capacity in Kenya? Oh, this will make a tremendous uh, impact. It will have a tremendous impact in addressing the uh, shortages because our view is once we've trained these people, they will also find ways to apprentice younger upcoming population. Some of these will go into universities and set up new departments and develop new curriculums that will help new and upcoming talent. So this will go a long way, not only in addressing Kenya's needs, yeah. but also addressing the, the region's needs, I, I believe. We are also, in this project, uh, supporting the establishment of the Wangari Matai Institute for Environment and Peace, right. which will now be a, re a reality in, in, the, in the next coming years. Yeah, that was going to be my question, because given the fact that we do know that East Africa is coming together through the East African community, when we look at projects such as this, particularly on the education front, should we not be looking at this from a regional perspective? So the colleges become an institution that is used by the whole region rather than just by Kenya? Absolutely, uh, Goffrey, you're right on spot on this one, because East Africa, as we speak, is moving towards harmonizing its standards and curriculums across the region at the higher and tertiary levels. So the expertise that are being trained in Kenya will find themselves working throughout the region. So when we think about the labor market, the labor demand, even though we've signed the contract with the loan with Kenya and we're citing the figures from Kenya, implicitly, Implicitly, we are talking about the entire East Africa region. 